The next major category that I'm going to talk about as far as environmental factors is going to be oxygen use. Okay? In terms of oxygen, one of the thi things that's key about oxygen is it can, can generate some toxic byproducts within a cell. So if bacteria use oxygen, there are going to be two enzymes that I want you to be familiar with as far as um, aerobic bacteria. Okay, so if we're talking about using ba uh, oxygen, this is going to be bacteria that's going to be aerobic. All right, the two enzymes that I want you to know are going to be the superoxide dismutase. All right. And in terms of that superoxide dismutase, it takes the um, oxygen radicals and converts it into hydrogen peroxide. All right. Hydrogen peroxide, that's the H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide is not good for the cells. That hydrogen peroxide needs to be broken down, and the enzyme that's going to break down hydrogen peroxide is going to be catalase. So in terms of that catalase, it takes hydrogen peroxide, and it breaks it down into harmless products. All right, which is um, water and oxygen, elemental oxygen. Okay, catalase is the enzyme, and in terms of that, if you're taking microbiology lab, when you do the catalase test, what you're looking for for that catalase test is the formation of bubbles, essentially. The bubbles that you're getting from that are coming from the oxygen that's released. All right. So in terms of processing oxygen within the cell, the superoxide dismutase creates the hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide then has to be broken down by the catalase. And in terms of that, if a bacteria is aerobic, it has to have those particular molecules, all right, especially catalase. There's some other enzymes that can um, process radicals other than superoxide dismutase. Um, but that's the main one that your textbook talks about. So that's the only one I want you to worry about. All right. But in terms of that oxygen requirement, okay, bacteria are going to have an ideal in oxygen environment. Okay. If we're talking about, and I'm going to draw some kind of test tubes here. Don't make fun of my drawings. All right. If we're talking about aerobic bacteria, those bacteria, and I'm going to switch colors here so that you can see them, are going to have a preference for where they grow in, say, a semi-solid medium. So the media that we're looking here would be semi-solid. There's a little bit of agar. You essentially seed bacteria into the agar. Their bacteria are only going to grow where their oxygen requirements are met. All right. So if you have an aerobic bacteria, those bacteria are going to grow towards the top of the tube because that's where the most oxygen is. Okay. We can also have bacteria that are anaerobic. All right. If they're anaerobic, oxygen is toxic for them. They don't possess the enzymes in order to break that down. So anaerobic bacteria are going to grow as far away from the oxygen source as it can. Okay? So those would be the growth requirements for aerobic, anaerobic. Um, we've got some other classifications as well. Oop, squeaky pen. I'm going to write up here since this is kind of busy.
we're going to have microaerophiles, all right? And in terms of those microaerophiles, they're going to have very specific oxygen needs, and they will kind of grow right at the point where the oxygen is at optimum for them. So they need less oxygen than aerobic bacteria, um, but they aren't completely anaerobic. They do need oxygen for survival, all right? So microaerophiles, they'd kind of fall somewhere below the surface there. Um, as far as their growth patterns. All right. Our next one for classification are going to be the facultative bacteria. You will see some books that will call it facultative anaerobe, some of them facultative aerobe. Just remember them as facultative, okay? In terms of that, the facultative, typically they're facultative aerobes. They're going to grow best with a little bit of oxygen. But, you know, if there's not oxygen there, they can grow without it, all right? Just not quite as well, all right? So in terms of that, let me draw the arrows. We've got aerobic, we've got anaerobic, we've got our microaerophiles, we've got facultative aerobes, all right? And our last classification, I'm going to draw this up here because I'm out of room anywhere else, all right? Which is good because that means this video is coming to an end, and I'm sure you're happy about that, um, are going to be the aerotolerant bacteria, all right? Aerotolerant aerotolerant bacteria typically don't use oxygen, but also don't care if oxygen is there. So if it's aerotolerant, you will see bacteria kind of dispersed evenly throughout the tube, all right? So oxygen requirements are really important for optimum bacterial growth, all right? If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to kind of summarize the last ones all together, so don't worry, you don't have four more videos coming. There's one more after this as far as growth. And then I'm going to talk to you specifically about binary fission.